hi, I'm Richard Hilson. Um, I work at Vet Services in Waipakarau and we've also farm here at Takapau. We've got about 300 hinds, 50 60 velvet stags and uh, 800 ewes, plus a few hangers on. Um, the farm here is about, the deer farm is about um, 300 acres and uh, we've, we've sort of started from a bit of a blank canvas. We had a sheep farm and we were able to pull a lot of fences down and site them for deer and I guess in retrospect we probably could have thought a little bit more about the waterways than we did but uh, we put a lot of shelter belts in, a lot of plantings, uh, a lot of experimentation with different trees, uh, trying to create shade trees for the deer. In the background there's the um, poplars, I think they're mainly Veronese and Crow's Nest poplars with Santoff flaxes underneath them. We planted about 1700 of those when we established the deer farm though so they're basically wind erosion protection but really awesome for the deer. They um, they won't go and sit right under them, apart from shade occasionally, they sit on a windy day, they'll seem to sit about sort of 70 to 80 metres out from those, obviously where the wind is, um, is sort of whistling over the top. But they, they're sort of semi-permeable, hopefully sort of letting the wind through. They've been, some of those have been trimmed just once now, they're about 15, uh, 12 years old, those trees. Um, so coming around to the left, there's a group of um, eucalypts which have planted for firewood. Uh, they're going to come down shortly and be coppiced. Um, in front of those are a lot of tree lucians, which have been great for establishing some shelter quickly um, for, for other trees that we've planted. In the background, some alders down that one side, which haven't really loved our environment that much. Um, in between those are our fruit trees, which um, we've got some plum trees and apricots and things, which have not liked it that much there either, probably because we haven't paid them any attention. Um, in the foreground on the corner there's some melanoxinum, um, I'm not quite sure what we do with those in the end but they're nice trees. They don't like the wet, it's quite wet in there and a few of them toppled over and they've got wet feet. Um, then all the way down the next, the long stretch there, there's about two hectares I suppose in that whole planting. Um, flax and a lot of deciduous trees and oaks um, uh, with alders on the far side. And we've also planted uh, a few, we've pushed a few poles in at the end there. We thought we might have some poplars that we can blank up with, and um, but we've never had to use them, so they've got a rather large. And we've um, put a little cut, little man gate down the end there so we could get in and tend the trees, but um, we've sort of had a bit of a laissez faire arrangement with our trees. We've we spot sprayed to establish them, we put fertiliser in with them, and we released them. Um, by hand, when they were a year old, but really we've done nothing much more with them except um, uh, look at them. So right round there, finally, is the um, there's a quite a deep waterway there. It got quite scoured out with a large rainfall, and that's been fenced off with um, pampas on this side, and it's got some tote trees and cabbage trees planted in it. It's quite a good example here of some of the issues you can have fencing stuff off. I mean, it's great that it's fenced off. But there's um, there's no more erosion. It uh, looks nice, but there's some blackberry getting established in there, and when it's mixed in amongst um, the pampas or some other tree, you know, some other trees, aesthetic plantings, it's actually damn hard to get rid of once it's established. And I think that is an issue. Um, it's nice to do the planting; it's nice to have some shelter, but you certainly can grow some weeds if you, without even trying, basically. Those are 35, 40 year old matsudanas and they, um, we had to do a lot of, we spent quite a bit of money clearing this creek out actually because a lot of them are falling in to the creek. They get a, obviously get a very good, got a good water supply at their feet and they don't necessarily grow a great big root system. So we had, when they got a bit wet, uh, I think when that man or two weather bomb came, they, um, we got wet ground and the big wind came and blew a whole lot over. So yeah, they, I guess they will have a use by date and I think that's another thing to think about when you're planting off waterways and things is that the it's all very well to plant something now, but it's quite possible the next generation is going to pay for it, and um, we need access if we're going to fence this off, so we can get diggers in, chainsaws, trucks potentially, just to, to tidy up what's essentially going to be quite a mess. So as you pan around there past the, the wiener deer, you can see more of the um, poplar and flax plantings. I've got, we have planted most paddocks, we've tried, we've tried to provide shade for the deer. So a couple of the paddock, several, or several of the paddocks, sorry, have got, don't have a shelter belt um, necessarily on the right side to, to provide shade in the middle of the day. Um, so we just pan past a, a eucalypt we put in and we've tried 
American ashes, which definitely didn't like it here, they just didn't grow. Um, we tried Unanemsis and they got toasted by a warm nor'wester. Um, so now we've just gone back to good old willow poles and hopefully we can produce some, some good shade for the stock with that. Further down the paddock there's a, a, a waterway that's been fenced off and fen uh, planted off with um, pampas and um, cabbage trees to keep the deer out of it and just sort of stop some erosion. It's quite, when we get a lot of, when you get water, we get a lot of water and we lose, uh, we can lose a lot of dirt. And the paddock we're standing in too, the, the, uh, behind the camera there's a, an area that we're going to fence off. We've funnily enough just done a budget this morning to fence it off um, along the lines of Plan Change 6 which is coming for Hawke's Bay. We'll spend probably, um, we're aiming to spend about $10,000 $10, fencing off the uh, size of the two paddocks. Um, it has, it's an interesting actually, an interesting exercise. One of the things we thought about um, is not just the waterway, it's the fact that we're actually losing fawns through fences. At falling time we're losing hinds following them as well, so we're losing fawns and then with dry hinds. So there is actually a, there's a counter to the fact that cost 10 grand, we're probably going to save, potentially we can make sort of, save two or three fawns a year by doing that. So that's a, that's a benefit, but um, mainly to fence the water well. This creek, this area was a, was a flax swamp, there used to be a flax mill on the next farm, probably, I don't know, probably 80, 100 years ago. And this was a meandering creek that never went anywhere, but now the flax is gone, it's meandered a bit wide and it's, and it's taken a lot of soil away. So it's a bit, um, there's a bit of history there, but we're not going to get the flax back. Uh, we'll end up, we'll lose a lot of land with our, with our fencing, and we'll have to um, keep that the grass in there short and the weeds down with sheep but we certainly won't be putting deer in that in that area.